Okay, so first we've got a task one essay. So we've got a table and it's talking about changes in travel, changes in how people travel in England between 1985 and 2000. Um, so obviously summarizing the information, making some comparisons. So the first thing to do obviously in task one, take some time, um, take a minute, two minutes, look at the graph carefully, look at the information carefully and decide what trends you're going to talk about. Because the key to having a good task one essay is having a good overview and being able to pick out the main trends. So when I look at this table, I think, okay, well, there's two different ways we can compare it. So you can compare change over time, so between 1985 and 2000, um, or you can make comparisons about different forms of transportation. So the first trend I'm noticing is that the overall amount of miles traveled per person per year has increased over the period of time. Okay. So if I was a candidate, I would be talking about this is one of the main overall trends. And then you can talk in detail about which forms of transport increased the most. Okay, so just looking at the long distance bus went up a lot from 54 to 124. Um, taxis also increased a lot. So you could say overall, the mode of transport increased a lot over this period of time. And then in the detailed paragraphs, give some specific examples of which forms of transport increased a lot. Okay. And then you can also make comparisons between different types of transport. Um, you've got cars, taxis, so like sort of more sort of private forms of transport versus public transport. Okay, so you can make some comparisons between the different types of transport. So those are the kind of things I would be looking for in this answer. So let's see what this candidate has done. So we've got our first paraphrase. The table illustrates how long people in England travel by different types of transport from 1985 to 2000. Okay, so the first, there's just one issue in this, how long people in England traveled. So we use long to talk about, it makes use of time. So like how long did it take you to travel here? How long have you been driving? Um, how long is it to drive between London and Manchester? So that's about time. So if I asked you how long does it take to drive between London and Manchester, you would say, oh, it takes about two and a half hours. So what this person needs to say is how far. Okay, that's distance. So how far is it? How far did you travel? Oh, I traveled a couple of miles. Or how far did you run yesterday? I ran five kilometers yesterday. So this candidate should be using far. So it's a, it's a reasonably good paraphrase. Um, I just think that they could make it a little bit longer. They could add in some more of the specifics from the title of the of the table. So they can like how table illustrates how far on average how far on average people in England travelled by different types of transport from 1985. Um, and then you could also include here, you could give something like, you know, with data uh, given in miles per person or something like that. So that could be a good clause. You could add that in a bracket at the end, you know, with the data given in miles per person or something like that um, would help me improve that paraphrase. But it's a reasonably good paraphrase. And then we've got the overview. So we've got overall, the sum of the average distance by all means of travel increased over the 15 year period. Okay, this is a great first sentence. Okay, we've got a summary of sort of the big trend that's going on, which is that the average distance by all types of travel increased over the 15 year period. We've got a nice paraphrase of the years. That's a very good sentence, good first opening to your overview. The distance by cars, the most popular mode of mobility, showed a significant increase. And except for local buses, people use public transport more in 2000 than in 1985. Okay, again, this is a second really excellent sentence. Why do I like this sentence? It's a complex sentence. Okay, so they've got two clauses here except for local buses. Okay. There's only uh, one issue where the comma, this comma should really be here um, to show your clause, but that's a sort of minor issue. Um, and the only one is that using the mode of mobility. So the most popular mode of mobility, mobility doesn't really feel right in this, in this context for transportation. Mobility is sort of like how much you can move and so it tends to be like if you were talking about you injured your arm, you could say I broke my arm yesterday and I don't have full mobility. 
Or sometimes when old people use those electric scooters, we call them a mobility scooter.、Um, but we wouldn't use mobility to talk about public transportation or transportation in general. It doesn't really apply to that sort of area. So the most popular, it would just be the most popular mode of travel. Would be more appropriate. So travel, transportation, most popular mode of personal transportation. Okay, you could say that you wanted to make it. You could say personal transportation. But mobility sounds a little bit odd in this sentence. But really, that's the that and the comma are the only two sort of weak parts of this this overview.、Um, I think it's a really great overview. It's got a really excellent use of a very complex sentence、um, with two different clauses in it. They do they're summarizing the information and. They're doing the the overview of what they're going to talk about. So I know that in the two detailed paragraphs, firstly they're going to talk about the distance by all means of travel. They're going to talk about cars. They're going to talk about public transportation, and they've not given me the specific detail. They've given me the overall trend, which is what a really good summary should do. So I really like this overview.、Um, I think it's very strong. So then, if we look at the first paragraph, so then we go into the detail. So we've got in detail people in the UK. This will be drove cars more and walked or rode bicycles fewer miles in 2000. So, is it people drove cars more and walked or rode bicycles? So, because we've got more first, this should really be less. Okay, more and less go together as like a pair of words. So, it sounds odd to me when I read the sentence, and it's like they drove cars more and walked fewer miles. So naturally, we use more and less together. So it sounds much more natural to say, "People in the UK drove cars more and walked or rode bicycles less miles in 2000." So that would be stronger.、So、then we had it's, this is a very good topic sentence here. So again, they're sort of starting their paragraph with a sort of overall trend sentence. Okay, so now I know that they're going to talk about cars. Then we get into the specific detail. Cars had the longest average travel distance per person per year, both in 1985 and in 2000, and the figure for cars rose by almost more than 40 percent, from 3,130 miles to 4,806 miles.、Um, the only issue I have with this sentence is where they've got by almost more than.、Um, I don't really like having this combination of almost more, almost more than.、Um, I would just rephrase it to: the figure for cars rose by. Almost forty percent, or rose more than forty percent. Okay, so I would pick one.、Um, if you don't want to use almost, you can use、um, by around forty percent, or you could just say、um, just under forty percent is another way to say that. Almost more than sounds a little bit vague,、um, a little bit confusing that you've got almost and more than together. So I would just change that. But again, that's a sort of minor issue. Because I know what they're trying to say. So the next sentence is the average walking distance per person decreased slightly. This is good. Decreased slightly to 237 miles, and the figure for bicycles fell by approximately 20 percent. Good use of the word approximately to be 41 miles per person. Okay. So overall, this is a really good detail paragraph. Why is this such a good detail paragraph? Okay. So like I said before, first we've got the topic sentence. Okay. Again, highlighting the overall trend that they're going to talk about in more detail. Then they've got two sentences. They've got a good, nice complex sentence here, okay, which is going to help their grammar score.、So、they've got a nice complex sentence. They're doing comparisons throughout. They're comparing over time. They're then following that up with specific numbers, okay. But the paragraph is not just full of numbers. It's not. It doesn't feel like the candidate is just listing. The information from the table. Okay, it's very easy in task one to think detail is just mechanically repeating. You know, in 1985, the average distance travelled by cars was this, and the average distance travelled by taxis was this, and the average distance travelled by bicycles was this. This candidate hasn't done that. They've included specific numbers, but within a sort of general topic overview sentence, which I really liked when I was reading it. So. I thought this was a really good, strong, detailed paragraph.、Um, there's good vocabulary, and there was only sort of two sort of minor issues that I had with it. So if you look at the second one, 
So we talk about public transportation. So in terms of public transportation, there was a drop in the distance by local bus. Um, in the distance traveled, in the distance traveled by local bus, which stood at 429 miles in 1985, falling 200, 274 miles in 2000. Okay, so again, good sentence. I didn't have any problems with that. It was clear they included specific numbers, um, and they also tried to make it a more complex sentence with use of a clause. Um, except for local buses, the other modes of public transport, such as long distance bus, train, and taxi, had increased travel miles in 2000. Um, had increased travel miles in 2000, and then we've got a list of 124 miles, 300. 66 miles and 42 miles, respectively. So this is a really good use of the word respectively. What does respectively mean? It means that you've listed three numbers and that they each correspond to the three nouns that you've given me in the previous sentence. Okay, so I know that when I say respectively, I know that 124 miles links to the bus. I know that 366 miles links to trains. And I know that 42 miles links to the taxi. Okay. So being able to use a sentence with respectively in to list detail is a really good trick to use in your task one writing because it allows you to include the specific numbers that you need to give detail, but in a less boring, less list-like less list -like fashion, okay? So if you can use a good sentence like this candidate has done by including detail and using the word respectively, you can include a much more complex sentence and you can include the detail in a much more interesting way for the examiner to read, and that's really going to help your grammar score. The only um, issue I have with this is in the very first sentence, um, where we've got this word stood here and then falling here. Okay, So there was a drop in the distance traveled by local bus, which stood at 429 miles in 1985, falling to 274 miles in 2000. I don't like having the stood and the falling together. Um, I feel like it doesn't really, it's two different tenses. So if it stood at 429 miles in 1985, it should be and fell to 274 miles in 2000. But again, that's a sort of like a, a sort of feels like quite a minor issue. Um, so overall, I thought this was a really good task one answer. It's quite difficult to get the knack of doing, of being able to write a strong task one response. And I thought this candidate did really well. So for task achievement, I'll give them a seven. Um, they can fully extend more if they want to improve their score more. They need to, they can start, you know, extending their answers and their examples a little bit more. So when I was, I was looking at it, I was wondering how many words it was. And it is just about 150 words that this candidate has written. So if they were able to write a little bit faster or improve the amount of words they were able to write, they can extend their answers a little bit more um, to improve their score. However, I think what this candidate probably did quite well was they spent time at the start of the writing looking at the graph and picking out the information. So that's how you get those good overall trends then supported by specific detail. Because I think they took time to carefully look at the information before they started writing. Okay, and that's why their task achievement was so good. Um, the same for coherence and cohesion. I gave them a seven for that. There was a good logical progression of ideas. They followed what they set out in the introduction. So in the introduction, they set out the two overall trends they were going to talk about, and then they followed that up in the detailed paragraphs. So everything felt logical, and it felt like they divided the information up in a logical way. It's like first we're going to talk about cars, then we're going to talk about public transportation. Okay, so there felt like there was a logical division of how they were going to talk about and compare the information. The vocabulary, I gave them a 6.5. Um, there was quite a good range of vocabulary. Um, there was a couple of awkward vocabulary choices, like I pointed out, that sounded a little bit odd. Um, and one thing they can do is that they could need to start sort of looking for sort of less common vocabulary to use. Transport is quite a difficult topic to do that for because there just is a more limited range of words to use. But for this candidate, I would recommend that they start looking for those less common vocabulary words to include in their writing. And then the grammar overall I thought was excellent. I gave a seven. Lots of good complex sentences, lots of good clauses. Um, the only issue I had when I looked at it is I thought there's, there are a lot of commas in their sentences. Um, they made one or two mistakes with their commas, but that wasn't so bad. But they used a really good range of complex sentences. So if you're looking to 
get a high score on your task one, I would recommend looking back through this answer and seeing the types of sentence structures that they use. So overall, this candidate was coming out at a seven, and I thought this was a really excellent task one answer, and I had very few criticisms or very few things for them to improve.